Okay, welcome to the podcast on plant anatomy. In class, we will have gone over the evolution of plants from the green algae and how they have become increasingly adapted to land um, over time. Uh, what we're focusing on in this podcast is how plants are built, their tissues they're made of, their organs they're made of. Yes, plants have tissues and organs uh, just like we do. Obviously, they are somewhat different from ours, but fundamentally, it's they are the same. Tissues are made of cells. Organs are made of tissues. Fundamentally, they're the same. All right, so plant anatomy. Speaking of tissues and so on, please remember that uh, just as a matter of review, atoms combine to make molecules. Molecules will uh, often combine to make cells, which is the fundamental unit of life. Please do remember, as we get ready to take SOLs and such, that uh, right here, this cell is the fundamental unit of life. That's the smallest thing you can have and have it still be living. Uh, tissues are made of cells that are all similar that are all similar and they do a similar job so that's tissue organs are made out of several different tissues for example your heart is an organ made out of muscle and uh, epithelial tissue and nervous tissue and all of that um, Plants have organs too. Leaves are made out of vascular tissue and epidermal tissue and so on. So just like your heart is an organ uh, for you, a leaf is an organ for a plant. Organ systems, uh, many organs working together to do a common job, um, and of course organisms. Now what we are going to first focus on in terms of plants is their tissues. So um, there are three fundamental tissues in plants. We're going to begin with epidermis, and just like in you, the function of epidermis is protection. Okay, it's usually a pretty thin layer on the outside of plants. This is, if, uh, you may or may not remember, but we looked at onion epidermis. We stained it with iodine. So it looked orange, whereas this slide looks blue. But these are onion cells. Notice the epidermal cells are packed very, very tightly together. Um, and uh, that makes sense. Epidermis is there for protection. We pack the cells tightly. We don't want to let anything in or out of the plant, but we don't want to. Ground tissue is kind of a generalized plant tissue. It has many, many functions. In plants, ground tissue can be used to store food. It can be used to store water. Uh, very commonly is the tissue that is doing photosynthesis in plants. Um, I really want you to think about packing peanuts when you think of ground tissue. If you've got epidermis on the inside, we're going to have another type of tissue, vascular tissue. Did I say inside? Epidermis on the outside, vascular tissue on the inside. Uh, the ground tissue just fills in all the empty space, so to speak. So um, um, vascular tissue, uh, we have talked about its importance. Um, it's the plumbing that moves large amounts of food and water up and down a plant. If you don't have it, then you must rely only on osmosis and diffusion to move materials in a plant. And that's great if you're tiny. Um, it's efficient enough, but if you want to gain size, then osmosis and diffusion are going to quickly become inadequate and you need to use vascular tissue. So vascular tissue transports food and water through a plant's body. Um, there are two types. There is xylem, which is transporting water. That is one type of vascular tissue. Okay, so this is transporting substances, water, up the plant from the roots. Um, it will also transport any minerals from the soil that might be taken up when the water is taken up. So it might transport those as well. The other type of vascular tissue is phloem. Phloem transports food, but where is the food made? 
the glucose, the sugar, is made up in the leaves. So we're going to transport that sugar from where it is made down the plant to where it can be used and ultimately stored, perhaps, in the roots for later use. So in this case, the material that is being transported is moving in a downward direction. So xylem, water, phloem, food. Xylem travels up, phloem substances travel down, okay? Um, usually xylem and phloem, the vascular, two vascular tissue types, are packaged together in a plant. Usually they, they are very uh, closely aligned, okay? If you see some xylem, you're probably going to see some phloem too. All right. So, so far we've had meristem tissue, ground tissue, vascular tissue. Those are the three biggies. This is a fourth. Meristem tissue. Meristem tissue is the tissue in plants where growth occurs. You grow all over your body when you grow. You don't just grow at the top of your head and the tips of your toes. But if you were a plant, that is precisely what you would do. You would have meristem tissue at your tips of your roots, every little root, and at the tip of every little shoot would be, um, perhaps I should indicate, say, maybe here, at the tips of the shoots would be meristem or growing tissue. This is where lots of mitosis or cell division to make more cells would occur, and that's where plants grow. They do not grow, at least not in height, in the middle of the plant. They don't grow here. So if you carve your initials here, well, we probably want to do that in a tree and not a flower, but nonetheless, if you carve your initials in this part of a tree trunk, when you come back 50 years later, your initials would still be right here. They would not be way up high in the tree somewhere because the, the tree doesn't grow here. The tree grows at the very tippy ends, okay? So growing tissue of a plant, Lots and lots of cell division occur in these uh, little places in the uh, tip ends of the plant uh, at the roots and the shoots. And meristem allows a plant to grow in height, okay? Um, found at the tips of the shoots and the tips of the roots. Now, there are some meristem tissues that allow some plants to grow wide, okay? For example, um, a, sorry, hold on, okay, this is a nice little buttercup that I went and got outside, and it's really bendy and thin, the stem is really bendy and thin, uh, it's real different from a tree trunk, but a tree trunk is also simply a stem of a plant, but it's a stem that's grown very, very wide, much wider than this, okay? Um, so, some plants can grow in width, like big old trees, um, and in that case, the vascular tissue is surrounding, the, the, the meristem tissue, rather, is surrounding uh, the outer part of the tree trunk, and it allows the plant to grow wide, okay? All right, now we're going to start talking about plant organs. We've already covered the tissues that make up plants. We've covered epidermis, ground tissue, vascular tissue, and um, meristem, okay? Now we're going to talk about plant organs, roots. These are some roots that should be familiar to you. You often eat them. Um, roots have several functions. Uh, of course, they anchor the plant to the soil. They're not going to let it, you know, get blown away. Um, importantly, they will take water and nutrients from the soil to help the plant obtain those things. And, as we can see in these roots here, they can also be store, used to store food. Um, carrots are a great example. The photosynthesis occurred up here in the leaves, and then that food was carried in the phloem down into the root where it was stored so that the plant could survive over the winter. After its leaves died back, the root would remain viable underground uh, and live off of that stored food that it made all summer long. Of course, you know, what happens is we big bullies come, come along and pull the root up and we eat it. Um, murderers. All right. Um, now, structure of a root. 
um, it might benefit you to understand this diagram. This diagram right here is showing the tip of a root. Let me, um, okay, I just pulled up some roots and I'm sure you won't be able to see them, but um, this is a dandelion and you can see these roots, well maybe you can't, you can see these roots uh, that were coming off. Well if we took the tip of one of these roots and just went whack, okay, across it, um, we might and see if we looked inside of it a longitudinal section of it, here's the tippy end and here's where we whacked it apart from the rest of the, the plant, we would, and, and looked inside, we'd see cells that were arranged something like this, okay? At the very, very tip end of the root, here we're seeing it super magnified over here, is something called a root cap, okay? Um, the root cap is made up of dead tissue, and it's there simply to protect the tip end of the root as the root goes down into the rough soil. Uh, so it's gonna protect that delicate root tip. Then, just inside the root cap, just up from the root cap, right in here, is the zone of cell, cell division, or the meristem tissue. This is where we have lots of mitosis happening, okay? So we can see it up here. This is the root cap here. This is the meristem tissue right there. That's where all the growth occurs, as we just talked about, okay? Lots of new cells would be made. But those cells are very immature. They're, notice their shape. They're just these little tiny squares. They, we, we haven't, they, they aren't mature yet. They don't know what kind of tissue they are ultimately going to be when they grow up. Are they going to be epidermal tissue? Are they going to be ground tissue? Are they going to be vascular tissue of some type? They've just been formed. They, they're like a newborn baby. Okay? So, um, small newly formed cells. Now, if we look above that zone of division or, or meristem tissue, we see that the cells are getting longer. This is the zone of elongation. We're not creating new cells here. These cells were created down here um, and this is continuing to grow in a downward direction. These have just kind of been left behind. But what these cells are doing is they are growing in length. Their size is getting larger. It's the zone of elongation. They're still not, not mature. They're still kind of generalized cells. They haven't picked out a job they're going to do yet, but um, they, they have grown in size. Now, these are the oldest cells in this view of the tip, root tip we have, uh, and this is called the zone of maturation, and this is where the cells now have, picked, ha have a job that they're definitely going to do. Uh, the cells in purple here are committed to being vascular tissue cells. They're going to be in charge of transport. These cells here are uh, ground tissue. They're going to be in charge of maybe storing food for the root. Uh, these cells here on the outside are epidermal cells. Some of them are even specialized to become root hairs. Um, you should know what a root hair does. A root hair is an extension of the epidermis that goes out into the soil and it increases the surface area. Look how much surface area is here. So much more than if we were just a flat surface. Why do we want surface area here? Because it's these structures that are going to take in water for us. So we want lots and lots of surface to take in lots and lots of water. Okay, so it's in the zone of maturation that the cells take on a particular job that they're going to do. Okay, all right, root hair increasing surface area to take up water, for example. All right, now if we took our root that I was just showing you, okay, and I told you that we kind of, all right, Coleman, get it together. If we chopped it across, we were just here, I'm going to chop this root, okay? Now we were just looking at it long ways to see the cells inside it, but now I'm going to turn it so that the place where I just cut is facing you, okay? And that is what you are looking at right here, okay? The cross section through, uh, the, through a root, okay? And what we can see if we do this, again, we are seeing epidermis covering the outside, a very thin single cell layer, all right? Um, we are seeing cortex 
which is ground tissue that is the packing peanuts, if you will. That's all of this stuff in here. We'd be storing starch um, that was, you know, originally made as sugar in the leaf. We'd be storing it in the ground tissue of the cortex. Okay. Now the vascular cylinder is what is in the middle of the root, right in here. That's the vascular tissue, and it would run all the way up the root, all the way up to the tips of the leaves. Um, xylem's in there, and it's the part that kind of has these big cells that kind of look like an X shape. And the phloem is all these little bitty cells in between the arms of the X of the xylem. Okay, so water would be traveling up in the xylem here, and food would be traveling down into the root through the phloem. Okay? And these are real photographs. Of course, they have been stained so that you can see everything. Um, but we are seeing uh, the xylem and phloem. This is what we just saw, that X of the xylem and the phloem is here. We are seeing the epidermis and all of this is cortex and a typical root. Okay? Uh, this is just the middle blown up so you can see how big the xylem cells and that they're thick cell walls and these tiny little phloem cells down here. All right, stems. That is one big stem right there, but it's a stem nonetheless, okay? Functions are to support the leaves, allow those leaves to get up high so they can get access to light. Um, if you can get up high and above all the other trees, you're going to get more light than anyone else, so that would be uh, obviously an advantage. Uh, they are the, the, the major link between the leaves and the roots, so they're the conducting water up and down the length of the plant. Sometimes stems store food. Um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, just sometimes stems store food. Normally we think of that as being a root function, but sometimes stems do it as well. There are two main types. There are little herbaceous stems, like this is a little clover flower and a little herbaceous stem, and it is easily bent. So you can see the dandelions in the image, okay? They are green and soft. We associate them with small plants. Um, now, as we talked about in our um, talk about plant evolution, among the angiosperms, which are the flowering plants, okay, there are two major classes of plants. There's the monocots and the dicots, okay. Herbaceous stems may be either monocot or dicot. Um, uh, and we'll talk, anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Um, there are also woody stems that are not herbaceous, okay. Uh, they tend to not be green. They tend to be like a tree trunk. They grow also in width. This is not growing much in width, but these stems grow very wide. Um, the particular type of meristem tissue that allows a tree trunk to go grow in width is called cambium. It is just meristem tissue, but it allows the plant to grow in width. And what you see here is a tree trunk. This is the bark on the outside. The cambium is indicated in the green, so it's a green band right around there. And the plant would grow out from this cambium, just like that, and the trunk would get wider and wider. Okay. Okay located between the xylem and the phloem. Uh, I should mention that most of us know we can find out how old a tree is by counting the rings. If we were to count these rings, one, two, three, four, five, six, so on, we can find out how many years old the tree is. And that is due to the way it grows out from this cambium. We can see patterns that cause these rings due to the annual growth. Okay, and we'll talk about that in class. Now, woody stems, woody stems are usually dicot plants. Okay, usually. Now, if we cut a stem across in a monocot plant, what we see is epidermis on the outside. All of this stuff that's not really, doesn't really look like anything, but is in, all the filled in space in between, is the cortex. 
And then these little bundles are va bundles of vascular tissue that are both xylem and phloem. Okay? Um, in a dicot, the, st the stem is a little different. If you'll notice, in the monocot up here, the bundles of vascular tissue are just all randomly scattered. So this is a very scattered pattern of vascular tissue. Whereas here, in the dicot, You've got your epidermis out here. You've got your ground tissue all through here, all around, all through. But these vascular bundles, the xylem and the phloem, are in a definite arrangement of a ring. And that is a definite difference between monocot and dicot plants in their stems is the arrangement. And here the vascular tissue is in the shape of a ring and a monocot, it is just scattered randomly throughout the stem. Okay? Now, this is the most important part of anything we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the leaves. Of course, you know that the primary function of a leaf is to do photosynthesis. They're like little solar panels up there, just broad and flat, trying to collect as much light as possible. Why? Because photosynthesis needs light. They're going to make food using photosynthesis. We need lots of leaves. Now, um, this is a leaf from a dicot. It's from actually a dogwood tree, okay? Um, I want you to imagine that we are going to take this leaf, and I'm, we don't have to imagine. I actually just did it, and I tore it across, and now if I'm, I would ask you to use your mighty super x-ray magnification vision to imagine what this looks like edge on highly magnified okay because that's what we're talking about um, the very top layer that faces the sun the top layer of a leaf is covered in a waxy layer that waxy layer is called a cuticle okay it's not made of cells it's made of wax all right um, that has been secreted by the epidermis that's on top and that wax prevents the plant from losing too much water due to evaporation from its leaf surface. Now, um, let me back out of this a minute. I want to get, well, let me just hand draw it. I'll do it like this. So this is our leaf. I'm going to draw the top layer first. That is cuticle, okay, made of wax. Underneath it, I am drawing bunches of cells. This is the epidermis. These are epidermal cells. Notice it's one cell thick. That's epidermis. Okay? Um, and so that prevents water loss. The epidermis is just a protective layer of cells immediately under the cuticle. Okay? Now, if this was the cuticle, this was my epidermis here. Sorry. Um, I need to get a diagram in here. There is another layer underneath of those two called the mesophyll. And the mesophyll has a layer of really big elongated cells okay, that hang down from the epidermis, so to speak. And in these cells are piles and piles of chloroplasts. Okay? These cells are called the cells of the palisade layer. And they have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of chloroplasts, which means this is where photosynthesis occurs. Immediately below them, we've got some cells, but in between these rounded cells, there's a lot of air space. This, these cells are referred to as the spongy layer. And this is where gas exchange, okay? gas exchange occurs, meaning CO2 is going to be taken in by these cells and O2 is going to be released because that's the photosynthetic process. O2 is given off, CO2 is taken in and converted to sugar. Now, together, these two layers, the palisade and the spongy, together are referred to as mesophyll. Okay, mesophyll. Uh, and that's where photosynthesis occurs, lots of chloroplasts, I already said all that, spongy layer, gas exchange, CO2 in, O2 out, so that's what you need there. But the mesophyll is made up of these two layers.
photosynthesis and gas exchange occurring in those places. All right, now next is the bottom of the leaf. So we started out on the top, we went through the middle, and now we're looking at the bottom. The bottom of the leaf is protected by epidermis, a lower epidermis, okay? And that's what these cells here, it looks like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. These are lower epidermis cells. It's for protection, okay? But the lower epidermis also controls water loss from the plant. In a time of drought, uh, water loss is a pretty severe problem. The plants lose lots of water through their leaves because they have to, ha they can't have that cuticle be perfectly closed because if it is, they can't take in CO2, which they must have for photosynthesis. So, what they have to help them control water loss and CO2 take, taking in of CO2 are little holes which are shown best in this picture, I think. This is the hole right here. That is called a stomata, okay? The stomata is surrounded on either side, either side, by guard cells. The guard cells will open when there's no threat of drought, there's plenty of water, they'll open because the plant wants to take in lots of CO2 to do photosynthesis and water loss is not really going to hurt the plant because we can, there's no drought and we can take in lots of water. But if in a time of drought these guard cells will close up so that we don't lose so much water. Now that's not always great because we can't take in CO2, which means we can't do photosynthesis. So we've got a real give and take here, but that's a really clever little mechanism. So when conditions are good and there's lots and lots of water, guard cells get full of water themselves and it causes them to pop open, okay? Uh, remember that word turgid means full of water and they can let CO2 in. Water loss isn't a problem in these conditions, but when conditions are bad, we have a drought. We have very little water, okay? The guard cells, because there's not much water, get flaccid, okay? Which means they deflate, and when they deflate, instead of propping open, they go and they close, and they protect that little hole, and so water can't get out, which is good in a time of drought. We don't want the plant to lose too much water, but the CO2 cannot get in, and that means there is no photosynthesis, which is a very dangerous state for a plant to be in. Now, this is the diagram I was trying to reproduce for you a moment ago. The cuticle shown here, the, epi the cells of the epidermis are here. Uh, this, these cells secrete that cuticle. This is the palisade. This is the spongy. This is where photosynthesis occurs mostly. Um, this is where gas exchange with the environment occurs mostly. Both of these together are referred to as mesophyll. So this whole thing is the mesophyll of the leaf. Here is your lower epidermis right there with your stomata is the hole. That's the stomata. And this on the side here and on the side here on the side here and on the side here. These would be guard cells protecting the stomata. And you can see the chloroplasts that fill these cells up here where all the photosynthesis is being done. Okay. All right. Um, so transpiration is a word you ought to be able to recognize. That is water loss, what we've just been talking about, through the leaves of a plant, okay? There's just another process you might want to know about called tropisms. Tropisms are plant movements in response to a stimulus. We don't think of plants responding to stimuli, and they don't quite do it like we do. But it, you know as well as I do, if I place a plant here and the window's over there, that plant is going to grow in the direction of the light coming from that window, okay? They can respond to stimuli. That is called phototropism. Photo means light. Tropism is a growth response to a stimulus. So the plant grows toward light. Geotropism is a growth in response to gravity. Imagine a seed is sprouting. How does the stem know to go up and the root know to go down? 
They have mechanisms to detect up from down, and the stem knows it needs to go up, the root knows it needs to go down, and so they do. Geotropism, okay? All right, we'll talk, uh, we'll flush this out, look at a few video clips, look at a few plant parts and whatnot when we uh, get to class together. Uh, but for now, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care.